Dawn, April the 4th, 1989. For Blythe A Power Station in Northumberland, a very special day. A day the station's to set what's confidently believed to be a world record in power generation. They, when it was first commissioned 30 years ago, have been invited to return to watch the record being achieved and to share in the celebrations. They'll meet old friends and, of course, recall those days when it all began. That was a good team over there, though. Yes, yes. yes. There was a good set of over there, yes. They the, the, the right blokes for the job, didn't they? Oh, good team. Yes, good team. Peter Liversidge was Blythe's first operations and efficiency engineer. It's very nice for you to ask me. Nice to see you. The record Blythe A is to achieve this day is the running of each of its four 120 megawatt generating units for an astonishing 200,000 hours. Year of 63, I'm building power stations now for electricity. Now times have changed and we must find new uses for our coal. A single power station keeps 10,000 from the doll. I'm satisfied to know that I'd a hand in building here. This job will keep me mates below in work for many a year. And I climb the narrow ladder where the stack looks out to sea. I'm building power stations now for electricity. There are two power stations at Blythe. Blythe A, built between 1955 and 1960, and Blythe B, completed in 1966. This 240-acre site was chosen for what, in 1954, was to be the northeast's biggest power station. Like all major buildings, it had to go down before it could go up. Blythe A alone was to cost the then enormous sum of 24 million pounds. Work progressed rapidly, and by 1958, Blythe A was beginning to look like a power station. Staff were being taken on, among them a 17-year-old apprentice who, 31 years later, is still at the station. A bit like the Klondike, um, there was a, still a lot of unfinished work to do, a lot of civil work still to do, a lot of buildings going up. Um, the engine room itself, although the, end, the, the west end where Unit 1 was, was complete. The east end where Unit 4 is now was still wide open to the atmosphere. Um, if it rained, the rain came in probably as far as Unit 2. Rough, I suppose, was, was the best way to describe it, yeah. To meet with the old club. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Mike. How are you? All right. Hello, Bruce. Hello, Bruce. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Joe. <laughs> you haven't changed up. <laughs> you, you look younger now than when you started here. I wish I could stop telling lies. <laughs> Alan Nesbitt was another A station original back at Blythe for this special day. He joined as a shift operations engineer on a day he'll never forget. A misty morning on October the 10th, 1958. We were just getting into the cold autumn season then. It was all bleak and bare and um, impressive. I was excited. There was going to be a lot to learn here. Like me and my colleagues uh, all had the same approach, I think. We were excited at the prospect of starting a power station from scratch and seeing it running successfully. Lady. And I'm sure you're all very well aware that um, in about a quarter of an hour, 20 minutes time, uh, number four unit will have run for 200,000 hours and it will follow on the other three having already uh, passed that figure. So it really is quite a historic day in the uh, history of Blythe. We're very pleased to have you all here to help us share in that celebration. A unit is the combination of a boiler and a turbine. Blythe A's four units were all commissioned between December 1958 and June 1960. The generators were made by Metropolitan Vickers, now part of the GEC group. The consulting engineers were the internationally known firm Mertz & McClellan, who are based in the northeast. 
With such a team behind it, perhaps it wasn't surprising that when Blythe Day was officially declared open on June the 29th, 1960, great things were expected of both the electrical generators and the massive Babcock and Wilcox boilers. But few then guessed that 30 years later the plant would not only still be going strong, but would be on the brink of a remarkable record. I can remember when I first came here. Uh, it was a vast building. Uh, I came into and I was looking for a boiler. The boiler, in my ideas in those days, was a wrong thing that somebody shoveled coal into. Uh, I spent all the first three days looking for a boiler. Couldn't find it. It's, our boilers are 173 feet tall. The Metropolitan Vickers turbine, 120 megawatts, just twins up and uh, they gel together and they've been a grand uh, team and they've run together all these years. excited enormous media interest. But here was a northeast achievement of which the whole country could be proud. Norris McWhirter, founding editor of the Guinness Book of Records, spelled out in interview after interview what he thought was the real significance of the achievement. ...seven other countries and it's a great tribute I think to British engineering. Here we are gathered today on an occasion which is really like the four minute mile of power generation, the magic of rowing numbers, and in some ways it has the same sort of thrilling uh, atmosphere. I was present at the first four minute mile back in 1954, and uh, I was actually the announcer when Roger Bannister did that great uh, achievement, and I think this is another great British achievement, and I'm looking forward to five and a half years hence, when they reach the million mark on these four sets. <laughs> AMM's FM Stereo, this is BBC Radio Newcastle. Morris McWhirter, the founder of the Guinness Book of Records, is visiting Blythe Power Station today to mark what's believed to be a world record. The Blythe Air Power Station's four units have been running for more than 200,000 hours. <laughs> 